الرحيم السلام عليكم uh, نتكلم ان شاء الله على مدى ثلاث محاضرات about the disorders of the salivary glands salivary glands we have minor salivary glands and major salivary glands major salivary glands we have parotid gland submandibular gland and sublingual glands regarding the parotid gland we have some uh, simple notes about the anatomy the parotid gland situated in the recess bounded by the ramus of the mandible base of the skull and the mastoid process it is uh, lies anterior to the structures important structures cartilage sheath and the cranial nerves spinal accessory nerve and hypoglossal nerve so these these structures uh, lies posterior to the parotid gland this there are structures pass through the gland the facial nerve which divides in the uh, in the fa uh, in the parotid gland into five uh, branches in addition to the terminal uh, branch of the external carotid artery which are the the maxillary and superficial uh, temporal artery also there is retromandibular vein and intraparotid lymph nodes the facial nerve the importance of the facial nerve is anatomically it divides the uh, gland into uh, larger superficial uh, lobe up account about 80 percent of the gland and deeper uh, deep parotid uh, lobe account for 20 percent of the mass also there is an accessory lobe which is lies anterior to the super superficial lobe uh, to start with the conditions affecting the parotid gland first of all inflammatory disorders uh, viral infections there are many viral infections that uh, can affect the salivary gland but most important it is and most important and most common is the mumps it is uh, cause uh, it is the most common cause of acute painful swelling it is uh, uh, predominantly affect children and spread by air air porn and uh, air porn infected saliva there are there is a prodromal period about one to two days during which the patient suffered from fever and uh, headache uh, clinically there is pain which is exacerbated by eating and drinking uh, in addition to swelling usually the parotid gland conditions uh, <coughs> excess uh, the symptoms usually exacerbated by eating or drinking uh, inf infection with mumps provides L a lifelong uh, immunity and it, the treatment is mainly conservative with uh, antibiotics and adequate fl fluid oral uh, in uh, intake many complications can uh, complicate uh, mumps infection including orchitis or arthritis pancreatitis sensory neural deafness and meningoencephalitis other condition inflammatory condition it is the recurrent recurrent parotitis of the children this is may uh, this is uh, caused may be caused it's not 100 percent but it's postulated that is caused by incomplete punk incompetent punctum incompetent punctum the punctum uh, it is the opening of the parotidic gland which is uh, situated above the second molar, molar teeth to tooth sorry uh, this leads to soiling of the parotid ducts with the contaminated oral fluids. Yani oral uh, contaminated oral fluids, rah, uh, oral fluids, rah, تدخل إلى ال parotid duct and cause infection. Clinically, common age of presentation with three to six years, maybe lower, maybe less than uh, three years. Uh, there is rapid swelling, one or both glands, in addition to the fever and malaise, which lasts three to seven days. These symptoms, as we said, it may be worsened by, worsen by the chewing and eating. How can we diagnose it? By, uh, by uh, sciolography, reveals what's called punctate sialectasis. How the sort of punctate sialectasis, snowstorm. Uh, treatment of this condition was by endoscopic washout and antibiotics. Other inflammatory condition, it is bacterial infection, was called acute ascending bacterial sialidinitis. Previously, it, uh, it, it was commonly seen in elderly patient. In elderly patient uh, uh, following major surgery. Uh, this is resulted from reduced salivary flow. Uh, 
secondary to dehydration so this result in ascending infection if, uh, through the parotid duct into the parotid uh, parenchyma now nowadays it is commonly seen with the patient who has uh, salivary calculus presentation clinically tender painful swelling generalized malaise pyrexia in addition to the cervical lymph uh, adenopathy as we said the symptoms exacerbated by eating or uh, drinking on examination intraoral exam we can see pus exceeding through the parotid gland uh, papillae common uh, infectious agents staphylococcal uh, coccus aureus or streptococcus viridans treatment by antibiotic sometimes this infection may progress into abscess formation so any abscess formation must be uh, drained how can we drain this by aspiration with a large pore needle or formal drainage um, by aspiration by needle or by surgery but the surgery is the most important thing the incision should be made lower to avoid the injury to the uh, lower branch of the facial nerve here contraindicated during acute infection so ascending infection and flare up of the already infected uh, parotid gland other infection uh, other inflammatory condition HIV associated sialadenitis presentation we have many presentation first of all in children children may present as a chronic parotitis in adults may uh, may present in a clinical feature uh, identical to the Sjogren syndrome and is clinically and histologically identical to the Sjogren syndrome but it, uh, uh, but there is lack of the anti uh, auto antibody other presentation may present with multiple carotid uh, sorry parotid uh, cyst w which cause a gross parotid swelling and facial disfigurement how can we diagnose it by CT and MRI there is a char characteristic Swiss cheese appearance of multiple uh, large cystic lesion multiple cystic lesion uh, this swollen glands usually painless nane and uh, regress on an institution of antiviral therapy I mean, the antiviral uh, therapy for HIV will be a spontaneous regression that can cyst may be uh, may be aspirated the second disorders it is the obs obstructive parotitis obstructive parotitis is may be caused by stone for uh, stone formation cellulolithiasis and stricture cellulolithiasis account 20% of condition in the parotid gland while 80% of cellulolithiasis in the submandibular gland stones are usually radiolucent with the x-ray mark to feed nefeci to diagnose stone formation location at the confluence of the collecting ducts yani within the parotid gland or at the point coursed over the masseter muscle or in the distal aspect of the parotid duct adjacent to the parotid papilla there are three, side, three mo most common sites on the parotid gland or on the masseter muscle or close to the parotid papilla presentation is intermittent swell, uh, swelling particularly in meal times how can we diagnose? by ultrasound a treatment it, depend, it depends on the size of the stone if it is less than 4 mm so it can be tried by the basket it can it pain 4 and 8 millimeters for that it must be broken into small pieces by lithotripsy and then retried by basket it can't larger than 8 millimeters so this uh, uh, can be removed by endoscopic assisted surgery regarding the strictures which may be complicate the stone formation and any stone formation can complicate stricture also it is account uh, the condition about 20 percent in the parotid gland citrictures cause a pre-citricture dilatation and is uh, stagnation this is stag stagnation of the uh, fluid this result in uh, a mucus blood obstruction complication in meal time syndrome starting at the breakfast يعني الصبح يقعد المريض ما عنده اي شيء 
ورا البريكفاست راح يبدي عنده يبدي السوالينج وذ تايم تو ذا اند اوف ذا داي وهذا السوالينج بيرزست بس وين وي دو مساج تو ذا باروتيد جلاند ذيس ريزالت ان ذا ريليز اوف ذا بلاك راح يصير عندنا جاش اوف ذا سولتي سلايفا ثرو ذا باروتيد داك هاو كان وي تريت ذيس باي دايلتيشن اند اندوسكوبيك واش اوت وذ ستيرويد اوبستراكشن Other obstructive conditions is papillary disorder. This papillary disorder result from a trauma to the parotid ducts. The trauma result in inflammatory, inflammatory edema and obstruction of the uh, salivary flow. Uh, may result in dilation of the duct, which is called mega duct, become visible, causing the patient cheek and shufa by our necktie. Treatment by progressive dilatation of the punctum and uh, stent. Uh, insertion طبعا هنا papillatum should be avoided لان هي cause further stricture most important things regarding the parotid gland is the tumors of the of the parotid gland it is the regarding the tumors it is most common site of the salivary gland tumor more than the uh, sublingual or submandibular Most of the tumors are arise from the superficial, superficial lobe. Features of the tumors arising from superficial lobe. These are slowly growing, painless swelling, either below or in front of the ear or in the upper uh, upper aspect of the neck. The superficial lobe will have swelling. هذه السوالينج اما تشوفها in front of the ear or below uh, below the ear or the upper aspect of the neck other uh, common site of origin of the tumor it, uh, from the accessory lobe which is situated anterior to the uh, superficial lobe and rarely arises from the deep lobe هنا شنو راح يصير البرزنتيشن مالتها present as parapharyngeal mass مثل ما تشوفون هنا في هذه الصوره parapharyngeal mass clinically there is there is a firm swelling in the soft palate and tonsil firm swelling in the uh, soft palate and the tonsil بصورة عام وطبعا هنا هذه بال MRI اللي سوى بارافارنجيال سوالك بصورة عامة التيومرز of the salivary glands are benign in nature 80-90% are benign while on the submandibulary glands 50% are just benign most common benign tumor هو benign polymorphic adenoma While most common malignant tumor is a mucoepidermoid carcinoma followed by adenocystic carcinoma. Adenocystic carcinoma, uh, it is characterized by its procl uh, proclivity for perineural invasion and uh, metastatic spread, more common metastatic spread. Now, the, this table demonstrate the most common types of tumor of the salivary glands we have adenoma either pleomorphic or mon uh, mono, uh, monomorphic regarding the carcinoma we have low grade and high grade low grade behave as benign tumor it is very similar it is not a benign tumor but it is similar to the benign tumor so the gro slowly growing tumor uh, less metastatic potential than high grade tumor high grade Uh, high grade it is uh, uh, it is a malignant tumor um, uh, with aggressive behavior like adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma high grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma others uh, other type of tumor it is non epithelial tumor like hemangioma and lymphangioma lymphomas primary lymphomas non hodgkin lymphoma secondary lymphomas uh, uh, it is uh, lymphomas that arise in the context of sjogren syndrome Secondary tumors either local or distant from tumors of the head and neck and special skin, uh, skin bronchus. 
there are unclassified tumors and tumor like lesions like benign epithelial uh, lymphoepithelial uh, lesion adenomatoid and endomatoid hyperplasia and salivary gland cyst what are the investigations first of all we have to do ultrasound this ultrasound we have to uh, to confirm that the lab is intrinsic to the gland it is maybe lymph node not in the parotid gland so we have to do ultrasound to confirm that this mass is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, be, uh, uh, it is originated from the parotid gland not from other uh, structures like lymph node and it's also uh, beneficial to sampling of the lesion by fine needle aspiration cytology in order uh, to detect whether it is benign or malignant tumor CT scan and MRI very helpful مثل هذه أول صورة هي صورة ال MRI والصورة الثانية اللي هي ال CT scan open biopsy is contraindicated unless gross contraindicated لأن راح سوينا سبريت of the uh, spread of the malignancy if it is malignant tumor illa illa fi hala wahda idha gross mal in gross malignancy and preoperative histology diagnosis is required to preclude, preclude uh, to radical uh, parathyroidectomy now treatment of the of the tumor it is by parathyroidectomy and the tumor should be removed Parathyroidectomy who have we have uh, principles not detail of the surgery it is beyond undergraduate level but the principle of surgery لازم نعرف يعني لازم تعرفون principle of surgery هي أم عندنا superficial parathyroidectomy and radical parathyroidectomy superficial parathyroidectomy the هو removal of the superficial lobe اللي هو عادة يصير superficial to the facial nerve احنا نحاول بقدر الامكان بقدر الامكان او ان بريزيرف ذا فيشال نير بريفنت ذا انجري تو ذا فيشال نير يمتى نستخدم هذه نستخدمه بالبيناين لو جريد اند لو ستيج ماليجلاند تيومرز و بارشال سوبرفيشال باريتيدكتوم فور سمول تيومرز uh, يعني ناخذ جزء من السوبرفيشال جلاند نوت اول ذا سوبرفيشال جلاند وعندنا اكسترا كابسولار دايسكشن ذس از جاست فور بيناين باروتيد جلاند تيومرز اللي هو يعني ويز اوت ديسربشن اوف ذا كابسول اوف ذا اوف ذا باروتيد جلاند نجي للتيومر ونحدد التيومر اباوت 1 سنتيمتر free age of the tumor or in size about uh, on this boundaries one centimeter from the tumor extra capsular mass will breach the capsule of the tumor and the tumor and then the capsule so an extra capsular dissection this is just for benign parotid gland tumors and the radical parotidectomy which is performed when there is a clear histological evidence of high-grade malignant tumors. مثل ما إذا كان عند كنا متأكدين الpatient عند sequimus cell carcinoma و invasion of with invasion of the facial nerve. هنا involves removal all parotidic tissue, superficial and deep كلها, and division of the facial nerve trunk. نشيل the facial nerve. Uh, through the main trunk with removal of ipsilateral masseter muscle removal of the masseter muscle and may require neck dissection particu particularly when there is a clinical radiological histological evidence of lymph node metastasis يعني بالراديكال باريتيتكتومي راح نشيل الباريتيت جلاند كلها راح نشيل الماسيتر مسل نسوي ديفيجن اوف ذا اوف ذا فيشال نيرف احتمال نسوي نيك dissection اذا كان عندنا ميتاستاسيس تو ذا سيرفايكال ليف نودز عندنا whatever whatever the type of the uh, of the parotid gland surgery there are many complications this includes hematoma formation mainly this is post operative infection deformity due to scar and temporal temporary facial nerve weakness 
what's called neuropraxy transaction of the facial nerve and permanent facial nerve weakness مثل ما يصير عندنا بالراديكال باريتودكتومي راح نسوي division of the uh, facial nerve سيالاسيل which is cyst like formation facial numbness and permanent numbness of the air lobe associated with great auricular nerve transaction in addition to the phrase syndrome راح نتكلم فقط على phrase syndrome لان هو um, um, one of the important complications of the uh, parotid gland surgery. Phrase, phrase syndrome is called gastatory sweating. This is an inevitable consequence of parotid. يعني كل patient يسوي له parotid parotid parotidectomy راح يصير عنده gastatory sweatings except when we do preventive measures. شنو ال preventive measures راح نحكيها بعدين. Pathology malt or pathogenesis. It is result from damage to the autonomic innervation of the salivary gland with inappropriate. يعني راح سرعنا ال damage to the autonomic innervation. Later on راح سرعنا شنو هو inappropriate regeneration of postganglionic parasympathetic nerve fibers of the auriculotemporal nerve that apparently اللي هي مسؤولة عن ال stimulation of the sweaty glands of overlying overlying skin. يعني راح يصير عندنا بالبداية damage, then inappropriate regeneration. شنو راح يصير عندنا clinically clinical features sweating, erythema over the region of the surgical excision of the parotidic gland. This is this is exacerbated during meal time. How can we diagnose this by a test called starch iodine test اللي هو هذا painting the affected area نصبغ ال affected area ال region by iodine وخليها dry بعدين applying dry starch which turns blue on exposure to iodine in the presence of sweat يعني راح نصبغ المنطقة بال iodine بعد ننتظر انها نجف بعدين نخلي starch من يصير عنده السويتنج قسطتر السويتنج راح تتحول الى ستارش الى البلو لاين this is diagnostic for the قسطتري السويتنج as we said السويتنج is stimulated by salivary stimulation now what are the preventive measures هي all preventive all preventive measures are to replace the barrier between the skin and the parotid bed to, uh, to minimize inappropriate regener regeneration of the nerve fibers. يعني راح نخلي barrier نحاول يكون اكو barrier بين ال skin وبين ال parotid gland حتى لا يصير regeneration لل postganglionic nerve fibers. ال uh, this regeneration obstructed by our barrier. Which are the barriers? Uh, either sternomastoid muscle flap or temporalis facial flap. Uh, or insertion of artificial membrane between the skin and the uh, parotid uh, parotid bed. Now, if the patient developed uh, develop um, uh, gastatory swelling or phrase syndrome, how can we treat this? Many strategies. First of all, by antiperspirants containing aluminium chloride, or by the denervation of the tympanic neuronectomy. Nowadays. It is injection of botulinum toxin called Potox, Potox injection into the skin. This is the most uh, most effective and can be performed as an out uh, outpatient. These are the major conditions affecting the parotidic gland. Adna boka adna Sjogren syndrome, where simple notes about the uh, other tumors affecting. The parotid gland. We'll talk about it in the next lecture. Thank you very much.